Penner, the amazing dog training man. And in today's video, I want to talk about a, uh, a Roddy that I worked with that was aggressive, lunging and unleash, had bit somebody. Actually, here's a quick little video clip of, uh, of uh, Diesel. Watch this. Relax. Hey, buddy. Relax. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I'm Hey, there we go. Good boy. Okay, and this is this is my uh, this is my daughter Scarlett. Isn't she cute? These little pigtails. I love them. This this little guy right here is my son Spencer. He's six weeks old. What a cute little guy, huh? See him? Here, look look at us close. This here is Martini. This is a little, uh, little puppy I adopted about eight years ago from a shelter. One of the many dogs that I've adopted from shelters over the years. So, uh, thank you for letting me introduce my family to you. And uh, you're probably wondering why I did that. And the reason I did that is because I did a video last week on reactive dogs. And uh, I was, like, attacked. There's this, there's this movement in the dog training world. And uh, it's positive only, force free. I like to call them the PO'd crowd. The positive only crowd and the PO'd crowd, because I did this video on reactive dogs, and they threatened me, called me Hitler, they uh, attacked me personally, <laughs> I mean, it was insane, people are nuts, and um, the reason they attacked me is because of exactly what I'm going to show you in this video, when you are dealing with a dog that's displaying behaviors that are unacceptable, like the Rottweiler in this video, this dog had been through other trainers, this dog had already bitten one person. This dog is very close to being euthanized. This dog is really close to getting put to sleep or into a shelter or another home. Well, the bite history problems could, could uh, crop up. So what I did is I walked into this house. This dog starts barking at me, going crazy, as you just saw. And I applied a negative consequence, a negative consequence, also referred to as positive punishment. Now, the all-positive crowd will tell you that you never use positive punishment or a negative consequence to deal with a dog like that, that it's going to make the behavior worse, there's going to be fallout, that um, you're just suppressing the behavior, you're not really dealing with the underlying problem, and it, that none of that matters. What matters is bringing that dog under control, which is exactly what I did. And I did suppress the behavior, which allowed me to reward the dog. So I'm going to show you the before and after again, okay? So you're going to see the before. I walked into the house. He's going crazy. And then what I did is I did some work with him. I applied a negative consequence. And everybody's going to ask me what the negative consequence was. It wasn't a shock collar. It wasn't a prong collar. And it wasn't a choke collar. It was none of that. If you want to see exactly what I did, I did it. I show on my other website, dogtraininginnercircle.com. I show exactly what I did so that I can walk you through the steps of punishment of using negative consequences to stop a behavior, which is exactly what you do when you're dealing with unacceptable behaviors. <laughs> They're going to tell you you have to do bat behavior adjustment training and that you should counter condition and that you need to redirect or ignore. No, you need to apply negative consequence. Stop the behavior. Once the behavior stopped, then you can start to reward the correct behavior, which is exactly what I did here. So you'll see the before and after right here. Relax. Hey, buddy. Relax. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I'm... Relax. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey. There we go. Hey, how are you? Good, come on in. Hey, look at that nice dog. Good boy. Get a nice dog. Hey, good boy. Will he sit for you? He's will sit. Good boy, sit. Good. You can let him lie down. You can let him lie down. Good. Oh, what a nice dog. Good boy. Wow. Excellent job, Excellent job. Can I give him a treat? Retreat? 
Excellent job. Hey, Good there boy. you go. Good boy. Good. So again, just to wrap this up, you have four quadrants, four behavior quadrants when you're training a dog. You have positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, negative punishment, positive punishment. Positive punishment is what I use. That's the quadrant that I used to stop that behavior. I applied a negative consequence. The behavior stopped. That allowed me to apply positive reinforcement. 98% of the training that I do is positive reinforcement. But when I come across a behavior that needs to be stopped, I use positive punishment. And so what happens is that many of the dog owners out there are confused because there's this huge legions and legions of dog trainers that are saying you can only use positive reinforcement, which is confusing dog owners all over the planet. So if you're confused, if you're not getting the results you're looking for, it's probably because you need to learn how to use a negative consequence to stop a behavior. So if the dog's jumping, chewing, biting, showing signs of aggression, there's a good chance that you need to use a negative consequence. Once you stop the behavior, then you can apply a positive consequence. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope it's helped you out. Have a great day.